success. We all strive for it. We all want it in one form. But what does it really come down to? What does it boil down to? And today, I want to talk about that. I'm talking about success today for a few reasons. Um, first of all, if I can inspire just one person in here today, then I've done my job and all my research was worth it. Two, I wanted personally to be inspired because I want to be successful. And three, something we all have in common. From Warren Buffett, success might be making $10 billion in the next week. For the janitor across the street, might be making someone say, by cleaning up dinner. But regardless, we all have success that we want to achieve in our lives. And in fact, everyone in here is a success. Just you being you and you being the best person you can be. But we all want to be successful in one form. Whether that be monetary success or just life success in general. And we all want to have happiness. Um, there's been articles written about it, movies about it, books about it. It's a hot button topic. Um, but I realize there are so many successful people in this school. Um, and I wanted to ask them, how are you able to be successful? And so I did. So starting in early February, I conducted 30 minute interviews, 32 an hour, some of them were an hour, the, the best ones. And I asked them questions like, what's your greatest strength? Uh, what motivates you? Talk about a setback and how you overcame it. And I found that they were all as, as different as they all were. I interviewed stud athletes like Chris Chuganoff and Cameron Benz and stud brains like David Spain and Lucy Zhang. David's going to Princeton, so pretty good brain there. And as different as they all were, they were all, they all had the same exact values. And it started with passion, work, and resilience. They all had an unwavering passion for what they did, a tireless work ethic, and a heavy dose of resilience when times got tough, because times did get tough for all of them. So, in the next 12 minutes, I hope, or 10 minutes, I hope to inspire just one of them. So, just ask yourself, what am I about to dominate? Use this formula, and you'll be successful. First one is passion. Within five minutes of every single interview I conducted, the word love came up. Every single interview. This was probably the most fascinating thing about all the interviews. Every, per every person, no matter what they did in their life, they love everything about themselves and everything they do. Jacob Chastel said, you have the responsibility to yourself and to this world to love life and love living. Do that and you have nothing else to worry about. He's so true when he says that. You have nothing else to worry about. Because when you have passion, the work ethic and resilience fall into place. Chris Chuganoff, we all know he's one of the better quarterbacks in Montgomery High School uh, history and one of the better quarterbacks in Jersey State history. Uh, he could be, who knows, in the NFL in a few years. But regardless, he loves to compete. He doesn't go out and throw five touchdown passes every game because he doesn't like football, he doesn't like competing. He absolutely loves to be there. Excuse me, loves to be there and loves getting the snap every time. And Cameron Betts, we've all seen her probably in the hallways at about 7.10, and she just loves what she does. And she even said she loves waking up knowing she has sports to play in the afternoon. She's one of the, the better basketball players in Montgomery High School history, already a thousand points, she's only a junior. Um, first junior to score a thousand points in Montgomery history. Um, and, and when she plays, I got to watch some of her games doing the minor, and when she plays, it's, you can see it. She doesn't just talk about it. You can see it in her heart. She's there with passion. She doesn't get tired, and she's just a great example of a great successful role model. Okay. The next thing that came up in every interview was work ethic. Funny thing about work ethic is everybody I interviewed just about kind of said it under their breath. They weren't really... Um, they didn't really emphasize it that much because it was almost like a given for them. They all worked outrageously hard. Uh, for Vlad Castillo, probably the hardest worker I've ever seen, he goes by the motto, preparation predicts outcome. And he says you can only be positively influenced by the secureness and preparation you have within your own body. Um, the daily schedule for him is ridiculous. Wakes up early, just outrageous breakfast, and just an absolute grind every day. For Avinash Pula, who took like 30 AP exams and aced all of them, he said you can actually work to make yourself smarter. And he believes he's done that the past several years. 
doesn't believe he's any smarter than anybody else. And he'll head to Vanderbilt for engineering. Uh, he's one of the smarter kids uh, in terms of that regard. And Chase Todd, one of the harder workers as well. Uh, Chase Todd, this past fall, he's a four-year starter in basketball. One of the first four-year starters in the Montgomery High School history. Very hard to do that in basketball. Um, this fall, he knew he was going to be a starter in the winter. Been a, he had been a starter freshman, sophomore, and junior. Regardless, he was in the weight room every day. Just picture a kid drenched in sweat, working his tail off, knowing he was going to be a starter. He's the, the best, most talented player on the team, yet he was the hard, most hard work. And just last week, actually, in a Snapchat story, a picture of him in the gym at 6 a.m. And he won Princeton Packet Player of the Year this winter. And he was in the gym at 6 a.m. in June of his senior year. That's where it is. The final piece is resilience. Everybody I interviewed talked about a setback and how they overcame it. And it was very motivating for me. And it starts with Jacob Chastel, whom I'm very close with. Jacob, um, his father passed away last March unexpectedly. And he's very involved in the Montgomery High School community and on the baseball team he was last year. Um, and he took a week off from school, a week off from baseball. and But the next week he came back and he was the same Jake. I, I was remarkable. I, I didn't understand it. Um, but he was the same exact Jacob. And it was great to see that from him. I couldn't, you couldn't tell anything had happened to him. So now I ask myself, um, if, I, if I'm ever in a troubling situation, what would Jacob do? How would he handle it? Um, now, I thought I knew what resilience was before I met Jacob. I didn't know what resilience was. And now I do. <laughs> David Fan, um, like I said, is going to Princeton. Um, and he thinks learning from failures is so important. He thinks just having that confidence that the next time you're going to succeed is how he's been able to be successful. Um, he's the perfect example of that. He's a big science Olympiad guy and a great smart student. Lucy Sang and other smart students, um, she talked about how you can come back stronger than ever when you experience failures, and that if you can just think about the failure as a process and really say, if you're in a deep situation, that the only way you can go is up, and that the, world, the sky is the limit for you. That's what she emphasized. And she even said, to shine, you have to suffer. Not physical suffering, obviously, but she said, you have to be uncomfortable at times and just appreciate and enjoy being uncomfortable. And lastly, back to Vlad Castillo. Um, resilience, he showed his sophomore year, he, he works tirelessly. So his sophomore year in the state uh, meet for track and field in June. He was in the state meet as a sophomore. Um, and he got brutally sick the week leading up to the meet. Lost a lot of weight um, and just wasn't the same Vlad for the meet. Uh, didn't play nearly as well as he thought he was going to. Very disappointed. That night he told me, and he told me this, he went home and cried for over an hour. He was extremely upset with himself. And because it was like, what? I've worked so, so hard and this happened to me. But at that point he realized his greater purpose. Um, and he and really thought about it. And he came back working hard. And just yesterday, he finished sixth in the state in the discus in all of the state. Um, which for Vlad, he's a tall, lean track athlete. That's very impressive. He's competing with kids that are like 6'4", 215. He's not nearly that size. So that was very impressive for him, and he's going to William & Mary in the fall for track. So I hope I can encourage you guys, just one person today, I've done my job, and I encourage all of you in life to find something that burns inside you, something you can't go a day without thinking about. Work really hard at that, and when times get tough, think about some of what these guys did and use that to boost your confidence and hopefully prevent. Um, there are some people that woke up today and they can't get out of bed. But everyone in here is healthy and you guys have a full life ahead of you. So now what are you going to do with it?